Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Himanshu Patney. I am the uh, MOSA program manager and assist team lead over at the Defense Standardization Program Office here. Um, and I want to thank everyone for uh, joining our assist training um, early in the morning. I know this is a kind of an optional thing for some people, um, but I, we had a really good turnout yesterday, and it looks like we're having the same today. Um, what we're going to do this morning between 9 and 11 is really talk about some of our DSP tools, um, the main one being assist. Um, and we will basically expand upon our assist clinic, which I will show you a little bit later what was done with that, which took place last August in person in Tyson's Corner, uh, where we went through different modules um, in assist, different tools within assist. And we also had a PM training session with a Q&A. Um, and since last August, not only at the ASSIST clinic, but through our feedback module, um, requests that have come to us individually or as a group through our ASSIST advisory team, we have gotten a good amount of feedback on what some users would like to see in ASSIST, and we've implemented a large number of those features in the last year. As we've implemented them, uh, we'll sort of carry on this briefing and break it into segments to just give you a quick overview of a few things in ASSIST and a good number of the major updates that we have implemented since then. So I will go ahead and start, um, and then I will hand it off to Dan Zuloff with Northrop Grumman, our contractor support for ASSIST. And Eileen Brady and Angela Wallace from our automation office will also chime in um, as needed, and also we will have a question session within each segment. Uh, so first we'll do the overview, then we'll look at some features with the project transfer module, we'll look at document coordination, we'll look at the overage documents report, and also changes, big changes that have been made to the uh, change module as well. Okay, this is the main uh, assist landing page, um, https colon slash slash assist.dla.mil. From here, you will have access to all the three enclaves of assist, which are the three different permission levels of assist, if you will. The highest level of privilege is with the CAC, and then we have a second level, which is where you log in with your account and a password and any commercial user can sign up for that account, or any user um, in general can sign up for login ID and login as they would on any other uh, website, search engine, mail, and so forth. Um, on the left here, you'll also see there is the quick search icon, uh, which is our public unrestricted side that will completely show you um, documents that are in assist, some of which you may or may not be able to access depending on their clearance level. Um, that's a very powerful tool by itself, but we always encourage users to create an account because once they do that, they can actually access a lot of information, particularly POC information on people for the documents that they're working with. Uh, we also have links, of course, to our feedback module ability to contact us, and um, updates on ASSIST, which we're going to go through now. So, so if you log in with your CAC, so this is what ASSIST looks like. You have multiple tabs um, at the top. Um, you have your search functionality, and each of these tabs, including the search functionality, include advanced searches, basic searches, um, modified searches, where you can search with wildcards, you can search by a preparing activity, um, a specific keyword, um, if you will. And the same applies for things like the data item descriptions, the DIDs, the international state standardization agreements. Um, in the reports, you will also be able to access metrics and reports showing all the standards you might be interested in in one format. You can export them to Excel, PDF, so forth. Drafts and projects allows you to view what is currently being worked on, not necessarily by yourself or anyone you know, 
just the status of active projects. Um, the DOD contacts tab is a very powerful um, tool as well. A lot of times, most of the requests, I would say maybe at least half of them that we get to our help desk and our office are individuals that have a question, a technical question about a particular standard or specification or any other document in exists and assist. And they want to speak to the subject matter experts or the preparing activity that created that document. Um, there are multiple ways to get that information, but if you know at least of an office that you're interested in that is prepared, say, a set of documents, you can always go into the DOD contacts, and there you will find not only their name and number, but also their email addresses. So you could send a message to one or two or three of them um, and ask the questions that you want, which may include gaining access to classified documents as well, if needed. XML files allows certain parties um, with privileges to actually download some metadata uh, from ASSIST. Um, it's really just a handful of users that use that. The other two tabs you see there are QPD, which is the Qualified Products Database, and WISIT, which is our Weapon System Impact Tool. And ASSIST links to those separate tools, but there is an interface um, there. And as part of this training, from 9 to 11, we'll sort of go over the assist and the changes to the modules that I mentioned. And around 1030 or so, Mr. Tim Kaczynski with our standardization program office will take over and discuss QPD and WISIT in a little bit more detail. The uh, My Account tab allows you just to modify your account, just like it would if you're logged into Gmail, uh, YouTube, and so forth. You can change your user ID, your password, your email address, your point of contact information. The admin modules, you'll see it has a little arrow down there. The reason that that's there is because when it, you actually open it up, it expands into other modules that can open other tabs. And this is where you really have a lot of power to manage your own projects and your own documents, um, initiate project, upload documents, um, and so forth. If you create a, an account and assist without a CAC, you have a lot more functionality than you do with the public quick search, but you do not have all of these functionality as you were seeing in the previous screen. You can see that the administration tab, the XML and so forth are missing, but you still have quite a bit of access to contact the documents themselves um, and also to controlling your account and seeing what is in progress right now. Um, you do not have access to the training tab, uh, which I will get into a little bit later too. Um, so that's why it's really good if you are a DOD or DOD civilian or a contractor to create your account normally as a commercial account, and then we can associate it with your CAC so that you will have elevated access to everything else that I discussed a few minutes ago. This shows the assist quick search, um, which is the public side. Um, and here is just a quick example um, if someone where they search for this particular mill detail, 60616. Um, you can see here that it says it's a controlled distribution document, um, at least since revision B of the document, it became distribution D. But you can see that some revisions and also the amendments and activation notices, inactivation notices are available for download even without an account. Um, so, this is not a typical uh, use case. A lot of them you would find would either show that you do not have access to the document, so that PDF icon on the left would not appear. But in this case, the ones where the PDF icon is there, you can actually download it. And this is open to anybody in the world. Um, so they have access to come in, just at least see if a document exists and exists. Whether they have access to it or not, that will depend on the distribution level of the statement, of the document, pardon me. Um, that also shows you, of course, the date, number of pages, and so forth. Um, so it's a really, really very heavily utilized tool, um, but a lot of times if this is, you need anything a little bit more than this 
we encourage you to create an account. So now I'll show some new features with our reports. Um, I'm overseeing the Mimosa area for the standardization program office, so I wanted to you know, do a little shameless plug, if you will, for Mimosa and the modular open systems approach to standardization area known as the MOS, which has been created in ASSIST just in the last year. Um, but you can see here there are several other reports in addition to the MOSA enabling reports. You can see non-government standards, overage documents, um, and you can customize some of these reports to show exactly what you want. Um, the MOSA enabling documents report right now simply just shows what documents are in a SIS that have been tagged with the keywords MOSA or MOS so that they are MOSA enabling. But as you can see here, this report, which of course can also be exported into an Excel spreadsheet, will show you not only the ID, the title, it also shows you the two letter code for the preparing activity. Um, and this is where the DOD contacts tab comes in and handy as well, is if you know that preparing activity code, you can get their POC information to get more information about the particular standard. It'll also show you the date and of course the status. Um, and all of these headers at the top, they allow you to sort um, in ascending or descending order, depending on which one you want to sort by, whether it's by date, ID, title, and so forth. If you click on one of these reports, uh, pardon me, one of these documents, um, you will be taken to a document details page. And this page looks familiar or very similar for most documents in ASSIST. Um, if they are MOSA enabling, there will be a little tag there that just says this is MOSA enabling. But the other tiles and titles and rows and things that you see will be exactly the same. You'll see the title, the scope. Uh, there will be a link to download the document further below. Um, you can see if it's implemented in any international standardization agreements and also which area it belongs to. Um, but again, the responsibilities tab comes in very handy for people to find out who to contact. If you see here, the preparing activity is DC1, Defense Information Systems Agency, DISA. When you click on it, it won't just take you to a generic DISA phone number or contact. It will actually show you the POCs specifically that prepared this document and are responsible for it. And you can contact them either by phone or email to find out more information. And if you ever have any trouble doing that, you can of course always contact us um, and we will step in and contact them on your behalf uh, while keeping you in the loop as well to get you to where you need to be, whether it's uh, just technical information you need or if you require the document itself, if it's controlled or classified in any manner. Here's the training tab too that I really want to bring a lot of attention to um, that's only available if you have the CAC login um, out here. This webinar that we're doing right now will eventually end up on here, but all of our other DAU webinars and the ASSIST clinic from last August, um, our international training videos and the slides are all available here. Um, and I would say that probably maybe 90% of the questions that we get, um, even from users who are quite familiar with the system on how to manage their projects, their documents, how to format things, all that information is available in these webinars. So here, if you see, the ones I really want to bring attention to are the first four um, that are the initiating and managing projects, document coordination part one, part two and the formatting and submitting of documents. Those briefings, which include not only, like I said, the slides and the videos, really will answer a lot of questions that most users may have on how to create a project, how to run it through the system, and eventually get it published um, with the least amount of hassles as possible. Um, and of course, our assist clinic training from last year um, is also on here, including several international standardization webinars that were broadcast um, as well. So yeah, and in the near future, what I'm saying right now and everything that's uh, been done for the DSP workshop 
will also be on this page. Our contact information uh, is readily available either through phone um, or through email. Um, and we're always here to help if you have any questions regarding creating projects, your own documents, or just obtaining a copy of a standard or point of contact information for whoever you might be uh, trying to get a hold of um, as well. And we're always looking to, to modernize Assist, um, make things more user-friendly, not only on the front end, but on the back end for power users and for ourselves. Uh, so we always welcome feedback. Um, and I'm hoping that you know, some of the users that are watching right now will be glad to see um, that we have implemented some of the features from the clinic. And I hope after the you know, conclusion of this workshop that we will get some additional feedback um, from some users on what they would like to see as we modernize ASSIST over the next few years. Well, with that, I will take any questions anyone may have on just and the ASSIST overview or modules um, in general, if anyone has any. Um, if not, we will move on to showing some of the, the new features. Yeah, Chris, I think uh, for if you received any questions. Yes, I, I have one question that came in. Um, okay. The question is, if the training link is only available for CAC holders, is there a workaround for our partners and allies who have a login? There is a workaround um, in the sense that you can contact us. Um, and I've had some users actually do that. And a lot of these, for example, if they're distribution A and cleared for the public, um, are available to be distributed to anybody in the public. Uh, so it's just a matter of getting it to them on either digital media, through email, or a CD. Uh, we have done that before, um, or we've even emailed them out. Um, but that is, that is a good thing, I think, for us to look into possibly is if we could create maybe some level of a training link or a training tab that would allow users that do not have a CAC to access that information. I, I would have to see if that's going to be uh, permissible, but I don't see any reason why a distribution A document, for example, um, cannot be shared with allies and our partners um, as needed. So if anyone does have that request, please just feel free to uh, email us or call us directly or even ask me directly, um, and we can get a copy of that to users um, that need it. And, and we have done that in the past. Um, even after the last clinic, we had at least half a dozen or so that did not have a CAC but still wanted a copy of the webinars, and we were easily able to provide that to them. Manchi, this is Kamsa. Um, yes. To add on to what you were saying, um, we engage with our allies and partners through our international standardization program, and yours truly is the, the manager of that program. Um, if there are any training needs that you may have, please reach out to our office. We also have other tools that we're using um, to distribute information, particularly our knowledge sharing portals. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on when we um, showcase our DISPO tools. Um, there is more than one way to distribute our information. We have uh, stakeholders in multiple communities, and we're trying to maximize the use of knowledge sharing portals, which are open to the public, ASSIST, ASSIST CAC. Um, so we're, we're evolving, you know, we're changing and um, we're doing what we can to get the information out to all of our stakeholders. So as Kamanchu mentioned, reach out to us. Um, all of the presentations, the videos that are available in Assist CAC are publicly releasable. We do not post anything on the internet that is not publicly releasable. So um, uh, we'll be able to get that information to you, but soon um, you'll have another way of re um, accessing our videos through our knowledge sharing portal, which is on the DAU web website flat slash platform. And we'll discuss that later on today. Okay, okay. Great. thank you, Tasha. Thanks, and, and uh, that was the only question I had. Okay, great. Uh, with that being said, I will stop sharing here and hand it off to Dan Zuloff with Northrop Grumman to show you some of the new features we've done 
um, on the modules based on feedback we received since the clinic last August. 